In this video, I'm going to talk about benzene and its reactions and the mechanisms and how everything comes together. If you watched the last video, you'd have seen me explain that to preserve the stability of the benzene ring, benzene can only take place in substitution reactions rather than addition reactions. As you know, benzene has a higher electron density above and below the plane of carbon atoms. This allows benzene to attract and react electrophiles. More specifically, the electrophiles are attracted to the high electron density. An electrophile is an atom or a group of atoms that is attracted to an electron rich centre where it accepts a pair of electrons to form a new covalent bond. So essentially, an electrophile is an electron pair acceptor. I'm going to now talk about nitration. In nitration, one of the hydrogen atoms in the benzene is replaced by a nitro group, NO2. So, benzene reacts with a nitrating mixture of concentrated nitric acid, HNO3, and concentrated sulfuric acid, H2SO4. Later on in the video, I'll explain how H2SO4 acts as a catalyst here. This reaction takes place at 50 degrees. The equation for the preparation of nitrobenzene is C6H6 benzene, add HNO3 nitric acid, and this forms C6H5NO2 nitrobenzene plus H2O, which is water. In the exam, it may be easier to draw the equation out like this. This should help you to remember that the NO2 actually replaces one of the hydrogen atoms, it doesn't join it. It's C6H5NO2, not C6H6NO2. Also, don't forget the conditions that this occurs at. Next, I'm going to go on to halogenation of benzene. Benzene doesn't react with halogens on their own. However, in the presence of a special type of catalyst called a halogen carrier, benzene can react with halogens. Common halogen carriers for the chlorination and bromination of benzene include AlBr3 and AlCl3. For the chlorination of benzene, you've got benzene and your chlorine. Under the presence of AlCl3, this gives you chlorobenzene at HCl. And for the bromination of benzene, it's almost entirely the same, apart from the fact that a different halogen is being used. Now, I'm going to go over the mechanisms of the electrophilic substitution reactions of benzene. I'm going to show you an easy to understand general mechanism that will make learning other mechanisms much easier. In this mechanism, the symbol A plus represents the electrophile. The red curly arrow represents the transfer and movement of an electron pair. So what happens here is, the electron dense ring attracts electrophiles, the A+. As the electrophile is an electron pair acceptor, the electrophile then accepts a pair of pi electrons from the electron dense ring. This forms a covalent bond. So what we've got here is the intermediate. The intermediate contains both the hydrogen atom and the electrophile that are being substituted. Since an electron pair has left the delocalised ring to form a covalent bond, the delocalised pi electron cloud has been disrupted and the intermediate is now less stable than benzene. The unstable compound immediately reforms a new compound. A hydrogen atom is rapidly lost as a H plus ion. This is because the C to H bond breaks and the electron pair in that bond return to the delocalised ring. So you're now left with a new compound plus a hydrogen ion. So Overall, the electrophile accepts a pair of pi electrons from the delocalised ring. An intermediate product is created in which a new covalent bond is formed, but straight away, the C to H bond then breaks and the two electrons rejoin the delocalised ring. Then, you are left with your products. If you can remember this general mechanism, the next mechanism you will find easy. So now, we can do the actual mechanism. First up, nitration. So, remember the conditions of nitration, 50 degrees C, and a concentrated H2SO4 catalyst. The first part of the first step is the nitrating mixture, mixing both of the concentrated acids, HNO3 and H2SO4. This then generates NO2+, which is the electrophile in red, I've done it there, HSO4- and water. So remember, the electrophile, in this case NO2+, accepts a pair of electrons from the delocalised ring. Remember the intermediate forms, this contains both hydrogen atom and the NO2 electrophile. The C to H bond breaks and the electrons return to the delocalised ring. The final products then form. As you can see, I've done the NO2 in red all the way along, so you can see the journey of the electrophile and how it happens. But the mechanism isn't finished there, because we don't have our H2SO4 catalyst. Instead, we have a H plus ion left and a HSO4 minus ion left. The H plus and the HSO4 minus join to form H2SO4. Our catalyst is regenerated. Now, halogenation. 
For this example, I'm going to use bromine. So, first of all, bromine and iron 3 bromide react. This generates our electrophile, Br. This also leaves us with FeBr4. So, once again, the electrophile, in this case Br, accepts a pair of pi electrons from the delocalized ring. The intermediate containing both the hydrogen atom and the electrophile form, the delocalized electron cloud has been disrupted. The carbon to hydrogen bond rapidly breaks and the two electrons forming that bond rejoin the delocalized ring. And then finally, we have our products. But once again, we haven't got the catalyst, so we need to regenerate that. So, we're left with a H plus iron and an FeBr4 minus iron. Together, they form HBr. If you remember, that was the product in the initial equation I showed you earlier on. And iron 3 bromide, our halogen carrier catalyst, has returned. 